What's up guys, I'm Holly, this is Deborah, and we are talking about running shoes today. Everything you guys are gonna need to know, not just about picking them and buying them, but how important they actually are to our running. I get questions from you guys all the time about if it really matters what shoes we're running in. Do we need to splurge on really expensive ones? Do we need to rotate through them every 300 miles? I'm gonna cover everything in five top tips. Very tried and true, I swear by all of this. And you guys can follow along. If you have any questions following up, please let me know in the comments. Let's go. The first point I need to hit home is that your running shoe does not determine how good at running you are. So don't fall for that trap in the running store. Remember, their goal is to sell shoes. Nothing against them. I understand how business works. But I want you guys to know that the way that you run, the ability to last longer and be strong in your running in the last few miles of that marathon or longer even, comes down to what you are doing and what you are putting into practice in your training. When we talk about running shoes, shoes can enhance your form, can enhance you being comfortable through working through better form and being able to run longer. I know that was a lot that I just said, but the main point being shoes don't equal easier running, better running, longer running. One of the best ways you guys can stay healthy throughout a long training block is keeping a rotation through your pairs of shoes. At least two pairs of shoes to rotate between. This will help keep things fresh from your form all the way down to the impact on your body. When we stay in the same shoes, the same distance run, same speed, we're doing that same loop over and over. What happens is we kind of just go into autopilot. We're not really making choices anymore. When we're rotating shoes, at least we're challenging ourselves to check in with what's going on that particular day on that particular run. I will talk later about this in the video, but I love zero drop shoes for this reason. Adding them into your rotation can force your body to get used to that feeling, maybe getting that heel a little bit lower to the ground, elongating that calf, maybe making your body up top work a little bit harder to pull those legs up. You don't have that spring off the normal running shoe. We'll get into all that, but making sure you're rotating between at least two pairs of shoes. So maybe you go out and get a new pair this weekend. You can keep rotating in your older pair and those will be your two pairs. They should be different ideally. Now we're going right into the meat and potatoes of this video. First thing we need to know, are we running on road, trail, or both? There are hybrid shoes out there that can do both trail and road and keep you comfortable on both types of terrain. I have the Speed Goats from Hoka. I've talked about them probably in every video I've ever made. You guys know I love those as a hybrid shoe. But if you are working between two pairs of shoes, it might be a good option to do trail and road and force yourself to run on both types of terrain if you have the option. Trail first. We want to make sure that on the trail we are getting a lot of good grip. So many things can happen on the trail. Lots of incline, lots of decline can lead to extra slippage and not feeling steady on our feet. Additionally, elements. Rain can last a lot longer on trail, keeping things very wet, muddy, etc. We don't want to be slipping. You're also going to run into some rocks and hard things that you're either stepping on or over. So anything with a rock plate is going to be really important depending on the types of trails you're running. Really, you want to be resistant against the elements and things, debris that could be in your way on the trail. You don't want to feel every little pebble. Additionally, guys, you want to make sure that the grip isn't so intense that you feel like your knees and ankles are getting rocked, even your hips, by any wrong steps. So find a good level of grip. There are some out there that i found to be a little too intense, more like a hiking shoe. That's not what we're looking for. We want to make sure they're light enough that we can still pick up our feet and run. So making sure it's a trail shoe but making sure it's not so weighed down like a hiking boot and making sure you still feel springy enough i love still a low ankle in a trail shoe you'll wear a higher sock if you want to protect against anything else but keeping a low ankle will make you a little bit more mobile in your stepping so this is a good example of a trail shoe this is the ultra timp i believe Timp two yes lots of grip on here Nice wide base, typical to ultra, so that wide toe box here. This is a zero drop shoe. We'll talk more about that later, like I said, but this is specific to trail. So I feel like I got good grip here, but it's light enough. I still feel like I'm able to run. For a road shoe, this is not mine, obviously. <laughs> this is a Brooks shoe. This is a typical road shoe. So decent grip for the road, obviously would protect you on like rainy pavement. But if you were to take this, you know, dirt, sand, etc., you might be slipping around a bit. This wasn't designed for that. On the road shoe, of course, we're looking for some decent cushion because you are going to be on that harder surface. Impact can add up a lot quicker that way versus the softer trail. So we don't need as much cushion on the trail shoe, maybe more so on the road. And it's nice to have that, you know, nice heel stack here just to get that little rock forward, especially if you're training for a marathon or something, all on hard surfaces. And then, of course, that hybrid shoe I mentioned, 
Hoka makes the great one speed goat, like I said, but you can check out any running store, anything online. Just read those reviews. Make sure people are running everywhere you might be running when you're picking a shoe like that out. They tend to be a little bit more expensive as well because they know obviously you can use this shoe for more. I also love the hybrid shoe because when you travel, if you're gonna do runs in multiple types of terrain or you're not sure how it will be, you only have to take that one pair, which is nice. Next thing we gotta consider, do you have any current pain points when it comes to your running? On a daily basis, do you notice shin splints, plantar fasciitis? Are you overweight trying to lose weight through this running journey? These are all good things to consider as you make your shoe selection. The shoe will not fix the problem, but it can encourage you to have better form in your training, thus leading to less injury, less pain, because now you're running well with the correct muscles. I'm gonna give you guys some examples of shoes that will help fix those problems I just mentioned. But again, this is not the answer to the pain. This is the answer to you being a better runner. First thing I wanna talk about is those shin splints. If you are someone who experiences shin splints, very likely that you are putting a lot of emphasis on the front part of the foot towards the toe. Your heels might not even be kissing the ground. You may be experiencing calf strain back there, just really endlessly sore calves. It almost feels like you're running uphill or going upstairs even when you're not. And of course, that familiar shin splint pain, we know what it's like. It's just that achy feeling that won't quite go away. Few things you can do, of course, outside of our shoes, foam rolling the outer shins, really loosening and stretching the ankles so you have a good range of motion, mobility through that. And of course, getting our weight back to the middle of our foot. We do not want our weight all on the front toes. That's just not gonna last. When we bring it to the middle of our foot, we can stack our body nice and strong, our glutes, hamstrings, quads, those can start taking over in our run form. Those muscles are so much bigger to last for longer. So I always bring up a zero drop shoe when it comes to shin splints because with a zero drop shoe, no difference between the heel and toe stack height, you're gonna be forced to have that heel hit the ground. It's not gonna be as obvious to you in a normal running shoe when you're up on the toes because you have this cushion back here that's covering the, the extra distance, right? So this still feels like you're hitting the ground with the whole foot, even if your, your weight is more towards the front. With that zero drop, you're gonna feel literally your heel isn't hitting the ground unless you let it. That comes with relaxing the ankle, like I said, bigger range of motion, spending time at the bottom of a squat in your warm up or cool down. Additionally, working on smoothing out the front of those shins, giving some length, taking some pressure off, and really forcing you guys to get right on the middle of your foot. That pulling motion I've talked about, that figure four coming right up the leg, that helps you land right down the middle, again, giving the impact to our bigger muscles that can actually handle it, the glutes specifically. So our form can be fixed in ways by adding in the zero drop shoe. I recommend starting with just once a week as you add it into your rotation because it can feel very drastic. It almost feels to some like you don't have a running shoe on compared to a normal cushioned shoe that's rolling you forward on every step, but this is a great solution for that. If you guys are dealing with plantar fasciitis, I am speaking to you directly because that is the first major injury I experienced when I was doing my first marathon training. It was this nagging pain. If you've had it, you really, really can resonate with me here. It sucks. It feels like it never goes away. One thing I recommend to you guys is finding a little bit of a stiffer shoe or an insert for your current shoe. In a traditional road running shoe, we've got the, um, drop, like I said, from the heel. We also have tend to be a good amount of cushion. We get that roll forward to make us just feel a little bit lighter on our feet. The thing is, if our shoe is so soft and the middle of it is so soft, our foot ends up working a little bit harder just to stabilize itself in the shoe. If you're not used to doing a bunch of mileage and now you're in that training zone, your foot's working pretty hard through the arch just to keep yourself stable, maybe even clenching a little bit on the bottom. Additionally, making everything tight because it's working harder. So calf gets tight, under the foot gets tight. It feels like a cramp almost. So a few things we can do outside of the shoe would be stretch the calves more, good static stretches for at least two minutes per side, and then working on the bottom of the foot. That could be with a little rollout, with a golf ball or a lacrosse ball, doing a little bit of just stretching through the arch, just lifting that heel up, pushing into the toes, and then trying to stabilize our foot using our shoe. So that's what I'm gonna to recommend to you guys. Either getting a super feet insert, that's one of the few things that when they upsell to you in the store, I'm okay with if you deal with plantar fasciitis. Gives you a little bit of stiffness through the middle, which helps just kind of let that foot relax a little bit. And it gives you that heel lift. 
some relief through the backside here. So that calf doesn't feel as strained. The bottom of the heel doesn't feel as strained. I've had plantar fasciitis happen on the front of the foot and the back. So it's kind of been different experiences from both, but the more stability and stiffness you can find in the middle of the shoe, I find that it just feels better as you're working on the actual origin of the plantar fasciitis. So again, the shoe is not fixing it, the inserts are not fixing it, but it can help minimize the pain as you start to run better, stretch more to solve that problem. And lastly, guys, if you are someone who is overweight or trying to lose weight through your run training, that's awesome, I'm so glad you guys found running, I would recommend getting a nice, good, stiff cushioned shoe. Not super stiff, but something that's gonna feel like you're getting a little bit of give back to every step. I really like Hoka's for this reason. I think they've just done such a good job at making running feel more doable in the earlier stages of weight loss. If you need specific recommendations, I'm happy to make them, but running doesn't need to suck from every angle when you start and try to lose that weight. It can be made more comfortable by a more cushioned shoe, getting a little bit of lift off the ground, really feeling like you got a little bit of a spring. I definitely don't recommend a zero drop for you guys just yet. When you do wanna work it in, you still get something with some cushion like this. You're still gonna have that zero drop happening, but you can get a little lift there from the cushion. I just recommend making things as comfortable as possible, not too light that you feel like it gets smashed down, but some good quality shoe that you know is gonna help you feel a little bit better in those first couple of runs. Next thing to consider, very practical tip here, go with brands you trust, go with brands you've heard of. I know that it can be really tempting to go with a pair on Amazon that is way cheaper than a $200 pair of running shoes. I totally get it. The thing is, in the long run, you're likely gonna end up paying the same amount because you're gonna to have to replace these shoes more often. Go with brands that really have put the money and science into figuring out what works. You know the main trusted brands, but do your research, read blog articles, see people talk about training for several months on a certain shoe. Then you'll start to get a good idea. And the other thing on that, guys, make sure you're buying from a trusted place that makes returns and exchanges very easy. Again, a lot of it is trial and error when it comes to shoes, so we wanna make sure that the place you're buying from wants you to end up in the best shoes possible. Through stores is really good, like local running stores, because a lot of them have good policies here. Go try these out for a few weeks, even get them dirty, whatever, bring them back. If you didn't like them, we'll find something else. Go through big websites. Amazon is actually great for that. Versus buying directly from like a New Balance, for example. I had an awful experience through that, through another brand, where it was just obvious they don't get a lot of orders directly through their personal website. At this point, go for the big guys because they have the capacity and the customer service. You don't have to wrestle for that money back. And then also you can have other shoes on the way to try at the same time. You don't have to be committed to just one pair of shoes as you try them out. Fourth thing to consider when it comes to our running shoes, sizing. You have to size up when it comes to your running shoes. I am giving you my little spiel here today so that the running store associate does not try to sway you in the other direction. At least you can explain to them why you need it to be sized up if they try to fight you on it. When we run, our feet are going to swell. It's inevitable, even in cold temperatures, but especially in hot temperatures. Our feet are gonna swell, especially over an hour mark on that run. We're gonna really feel it expand into the shoe, fill it out. That means on a cold foot or a foot that hasn't run yet in the running store, it might feel big on you for sure, and it should. So we wanna make sure that we really just use our shoes as an extension of our body. We wanna almost not notice that they're on at all. So when it comes to your shoe, guys, at least like a half inch at the front here. I know that seems crazy. Sometimes I even have a little bit more. I'm kind of nuts. Also making sure you have the width. If you have a wide foot, get a wide version shoe. Lots of stores carry wide versions of shoes. You can also try different, normal and wide, and see what works or mix up too. That's what I do. I do some runs in wide versions, some in uh, normal, the B version or whatever. Make sure you have space, really, really important. If you don't have space, you're gonna experience numbness, tingling, cramping in the bottom of your feet that's not quite plantar fasciitis, but just, you know the feeling, it's gonna be uncomfortable. You might have black toenails. That can be caused by a lot of things, but a lot of it can be slamming into the side corners of those shoes. Really important also, guys, if you're doing trail running, you're gonna be coming down those downhills you wanna make sure that foot can totally spread. It doesn't wanna be balled up slamming into the front of the shoe. You can tie things well with that heel lock on the laces to make sure your foot's not gonna slide and move around, but it will have the space to spread. 
Point number five, guys, your running shoe is not your gym shoe. You should have separate shoes for these activities. In the gym, we're looking for stability, really nice fit to the foot compared to what I just talked about in sizing up. You wanna have a true fit for your gym shoe. Don't wanna be moving around. You're gonna do lateral work. You might be jumping. You might be doing step ups or single leg work. You wanna make sure that you have a nice, solid foundation. I love the Metcon from Nike for this. Solid foundation for any sort of movement, not just the regular forward motion of running. We want a nice landing bed for solid, many miles on end in our running shoe, but when it comes to gym, we wanna be able to move well and move quick. We also wanna make sure we're not gonna roll an ankle. So I love zero drop, nice solid foundation here, great for the gym, and we want this to fit true to size. Additionally, guys, with the running shoe, if I go into the gym and I try to back squat in this or I try to deadlift in this, I'm again, a lot of times being propelled to be a little bit more forward on my feet here and I might not notice it. It's tough to keep the weight back in the heels, especially as you lift heavy. We really, really wanna have our foundation in the gym concentrated on whatever we're working on. So if we're using our glutes or our quads or our hamstrings or whatever to move that weight around, we wanna make sure we're really targeting that area. This makes us a little numb. We can't exactly feel what area we're working in the running shoe. More advanced people, of course, can, but I really recommend two separate shoes for this. Also recommend not running in your gym shoes for a variety of reasons, but they weren't designed to do that. So you should have a separate pair for the gym, separate pair for running. One bonus tip to leave you guys with today, don't skimp on the socks. If you do all the stuff I told you with the shoes and skimp on your running socks, you lose a lot of that advantage in picking the right shoe. A couple tips around your socks here. Get ones that fit nice and snug to your arch so they're not moving around. Get something a little bit higher so they're not slipping down below the shoe. I love an ankle sock or higher, like that crew length or higher up. Get something that's gonna be cushioned enough, that's comfortable enough for you, especially in the heel and toe, but not so cushioned that it feels like you can't really feel where your foot is in the shoe. Additionally, guys, don't throw these in the dryer. Line dry them if you can. The dryer sheets can make things really wear out quicker, slippery, and you can dry rot your socks if you're constantly putting th them through that heat. Take care of those socks and keep adding to your collection. In Gingy, Belega, Smart Wool, Features, so many good socks out there I can recommend. But thank you guys for watching today. All those tips. I hope you find the best pair of shoes and I will see you soon. Bye. Say bye, Deborah. Thanks for watching.